Okay, my current thinking is that I'm gonna be here for two more weeks. We applied for visas four weeks ago now, and my visa should be here in a month, except that I picked the month that had Easter, Easter week, and we also have another public holiday tomorrow, which means I might never get my passport back. I had to do an outfit change. I approached the hand carry bag and the bag could potentially live out of forever. If the things in the big bag went missing, I could survive. Also, I'm a fan of soft luggage, any kind of duffel. If you think it's full, it can probably still fit in a, another jersey or jumper, whatever you call it, if you try hard enough. Having a very stuffed bag is not always the best idea if you need to access something quickly it can be an absolute nightmare put aside the things that i know i'm gonna wear in the next two weeks i bought a whole bunch of these packing organizer thingy bobs which i love but have absolutely no idea how to utilize oh airplane outfits should we talk about airplane outfits these things are not going inside the bag but yes they're important this guy, he's important. This guy, he's important too. I think I have the things that I need for my 10 day, seven day wardrobe. There are a few things that I know I've had in the past that are missing. Seeing if it's sticky. I would normally put this in a coat hanger, but I'd like to see what everything looks like when it's packed up. So we're going to fold it as if we're getting ready to go. And just to amplify some of that excitement that you feel before you're going on a trip, I am a fantastic last minute packer and a last minute anything actually. I'm very good at. Um, working under pressure. If anything, I might only work under pressure. I remember as a kid, I used to talk about going traveling with my sisters. So before you go to bed, we just chat about how exciting things like going on an airplane were. Everything from the toilet flushes on an airplane <laughs> to the kind of food that they'd serve us. And then sometimes I feel like I've lost that magic for traveling because I've traveled so comfortably. When you're on your own, when you're traveling on your own, you have to be vigilant. And when you're really vigilant, I think you lose that magic because you know too much, you're aware of too much. You can't just dance along in a daydream. So this is a nice controlled way to feel the magic of getting ready for a trip. Gonna get some of these baggy things out. Okay, my yellow bag is the bag that I take with me on the plane. It's squidgy, soft, it's bright, so hopefully it doesn't go missing. The OG hand carry. This guy's going in here, it's freaking heavy. I'll just I'll just put in one jacket. Oh shorts. Can never have too many pairs of shorts. I'm wondering if I should start a pile now that's the things that I actually intend to get rid of. There's lots of random stuff, like this is the tags for my wetsuit. I'm known for keeping lots of weird paraphernalia like this. Just in case I want to sell something again, I always keep the tag. Okay, I'm making some progress. This smells really nice. It's a dryer sheet. I'm gonna bring it with me. Those little bags that have stuff in them which I am unsure of what to do with. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to deal with all of that. I think I need to take a break.
I never felt like I could the things that I was actually interested in because boat people usually only want to talk about boats. That makes sense, right? If you meet someone at a work convention, uh, maybe you're going to a conference about mobile phones, then you're going to talk to them about mobile phones and there's no room really for anything else. This is okay for me and I think for most people on a, on a micro basis maybe if you just go to work and you talk about those things but you have some outlets to talk about other things that's okay but when you are always talking about those things with people that you feel you don't connect to truly it's quite exhausting i only realized this about myself after the experience and now I've learned that, now I understand that it's a lesson. It's good to be out of your comfort zone. It's good to talk about things that aren't your main field of knowledge, but you must have some sort of outlet for the other things that you enjoy. Okay, here is my writing bag. Goes into the tote bag. Pieces of paper, got so many pieces of paper. This is a contract that my student and I devised and signed to motivate one another to excel. The deadline is one week from today, so we're almost there. I've got another notebook. I always have more than one notebook on the go. Um, some cover letters because I've been applying to jobs, but all of these jobs were unsuccessful. Therefore, I'm going to remove this bad juju. I have semi sorted out some the paper they're going back into the bag what else and that's it i would usually also have some snacks yeah the snacks are quite important so just imagine there's some snacks inside there very used to just packing everything up and making impulsive decisions when i feel things are not working for me that can be easily interpreted as flight mode. But as I get older, I feel I'm not so impulsive anymore and I'm more reactive to fear, which is different from how I've previously operated. Being non-attached, non-committal has been my modus operandi. I'm a little bit less comfortable with, with continuing to do that. And I think a large part of that is because I'm back in New Zealand and I'm receiving all of the messages from my contemporaries that I should be settling down, I should be more uh, stable in my career. As much as I've heard these things challenged by those who have lived past this level in their lives, it's still difficult to ignore the messages when they're happening in your peers. I have a theory that once I leave, I won't feel this way anymore. Once I'm out in the ether, untethered, I'll remember why it is that I chose to live in this free form way in the first place. And that I just have to trust my abilities, my mind, that I am capable of surviving on the run. I guess the other thing that's different is I am more comfortable now than I've ever been in my life. And I feel it's natural for your baseline risk appetite to change. We're almost there, but we're also so far away. I get totally overwhelmed in the middle of doing tasks. And because I was doing something which made things messier, I often work myself up into a greater state of distress. I looked at buying a house. I think it made me feel worse about buying a house than ever. One of the reasons that I applied for so many jobs and started thinking more seriously about living in a way which is going to enable me to do things in the future as opposed to just living day by day or week by week, which is what I'm used to, I realised it's so difficult for me to think about the future in any capacity, even what I'm going to do later on today. If I have a student at six o'clock, I'm usually paralyzed by the fact I have a student at six o'clock. 
when it comes to planning for a house. Despite where I am now, I don't think it's something within reach for me. So in some ways that's really off-putting, but in other ways it's encouraging me to think about new options, other options. So the house buying investigation process turned out to be one of the most anxiety inducing things I've ever done. In part because I did used to think it was within reach that I would be capable of, of buying a house. I used to think I'd have it all planned and mapped out by 22. I lost motivation completely for working in a conventional manner. So that didn't help because to buy a house you need a certain amount of money. I'm not sure buying a house fits into living the way I'm living now. There are two solutions for that. I can change the way I'm living or I can not buy a house. Pursue some path, however narrow and crooked, in which you walk with love and reverence. David Henry through. Uh, now I'm putting away the things that I'm not quite sure where to go, so I'm just throwing them in random places. This is when motivation's out. It's down. A little hat. Is wearing a hat indoors the same energy as wearing sunglasses indoors? I look like I'm a farmer ready to like plow the fields. Heaps of room. It's still flaccid. We good.